Serious. What's the scariest or saddest thing you've ever dealt with or saw at school? Scariest was a routine hallway fight that went sideways. It was between two girls. Out of nowhere, one of them pulls out a box cutter in the middle of the fight and gets a clean strike right across the other girl's face. The saddest was probably my neighbor. When she was in fifth grade, early middle school, she was trying to save up money for something. I don't remember what. Her parents were huge stoners, had enormous weed plants growing in their backyard. I could see them clear as day. One day, she brought a gallon-sized bag full of weed to school and was planning on selling it to one of the older kids. The school found out and called the police. I remember coming home and watching them raid their house, taking out plant after plant. Both the girls ended up in foster care for a long while after that. Grew up in a pretty poor district. Got some that people would probably consider worse. Vicious fights, drugs, guns, teacher on student violence and vice versa. But here's a couple that stick out. Scariest, high school. Kid assaulted a girl at a party. Following Monday, her boyfriend caught him in the parking lot. He beat and stumped him ruthlessly and actually imprinted a Nike swoosh in the kid's face. I saw the aftermath and that kid was a mess. His lips had somehow split and peeled back, exposing all the teeth on the left side of his face. Facial reconstruction for sure. No idea how he did after that day. Saddest. Junior high. Kid was getting mercilessly picked on because he was wearing the same clothes for like the third or fourth day straight. Super quiet kid, didn't say anything back. We later found out he hadn't changed because his older brother, who was his only caretaker, had killed himself the prior weekend. This seventh grader was the only one left who knew and he was so emotionally fucked. He just silently carried on with school until a neighbor figured out something was wrong. The final year of my high school, we graduated 16 here. We were given the option to go on a ski trip somewhere in Italy. One of the teachers seduced and slept with a student on the trip and naturally being young and dumb, she fell in love with him and genuinely believed he loved her back. Then, when we got back from the trip, he completely blanked her and broke her heart. She spent hours sobbing in the bathroom and hallways. Nothing was done about it. A talkative kid, who I later learned was considered weird, one day came up to me outside the gym during physical education class. He and I had never spoken before. As we waited for the gym doors to open, he pointed to the wall and said, imagine if someone was thrown super hard against that surface. They would stick, bleed, and then slide down and die. I was taken aback, but was told that he often said this sort of thing. That weekend, and sorry to continue with a sad theme, yeah, he hanged himself in his backyard. This was a long, long time back. I don't know how to react then, and I still don't. Kelsey Smith she was a year ahead of me in high school. I didn't know her very well, but had a couple of classes with her and chatted maybe a handful of times. She was one of those happy people that pretty much everyone knew. Then, one morning, shortly after the end of the year, my dad told me that some girl from school had gone missing. I did what any teenager in 2007 would have done and jumped on Facebook and found a whole deluge of posts from my friends asking for any information about Kelsey. Then, I remember I was in the airport with a bunch of school friends getting ready to go on a class trip to Germany when we saw in the news in the terminal that a body had been found. It was my senior year in high school and we were doing the last dress rehearsal for the school play. We had a special guest that night. It was our lead's grandmother. She had Alzheimer's and so couldn't handle a crowd as she would have panic attacks but she wanted to see her granddaughter in the play, up the down staircase if you're curious. I dimmed the lights in the auditorium and the curtain went up. We started the background music and everything looked good when I heard the director teacher yell out, Turn up the lights, goddammit! Teacher never raised his voice and certainly never swore. I looked over the edge of the lighting booth and saw teacher pulling an elderly woman out of the seats onto the aisle. What's going on? said the stage manager in a radio in my ear. Send lead out. I think something is wrong. Lead came on stage, saw what was happening and I swear to you, it's nearly 30 years later and I can still hear her scream. It started off as unintelligible. But eventually, we could hear her saying something to the extent of, no, please don't leave me, over and over again. Someone had ran into the hallway where the payphone was and called for an ambulance. I'd aimed the spotlight onto the teacher and grandma so they could hopefully see better. Auditorium lights weren't that bright. The EMTs came quickly, loaded grandma up and took her to the hospital. Lead and the rest of her family followed. Needless to say, we didn't have dress rehearsal, and grandma passed away that night. The show still needed to go on the next day, lead showed, performed phenomenally, and we made sure that grandma's seat was empty for every show. To this day, when any of us talk about it, 
We all agree that she was there, cheering us all on. Saddest thing, in high school, a girl came to school and got stomach sick during class and literally shit herself and had it come out the back of her pants. You just don't ever have people not think of that about you for the rest of your life. She was a nice girl and it was sad because she never had hardly any friends after that and eventually transferred to another school. There was a severely disabled kid who had several physical and mental disabilities such as extra fingers and confined to her stroller. He had the mental capacity of an infant, unable to make speech but incoherent noises. That kid always had a smile on and was gleeful and no one said anything bad about him. They'd read to him or greet him as his liaison would push him about. One day I saw an ambulance leaving. His liaison was crying and running to her car. He had gone into cardiac arrest and died upon arrival to the hospital. He was only nine. I was in special ed at the time and the hardest news to break to the more severe kids was our friend had passed away the staff breaking the news to the kids. Sadly, the school didn't do a day of mourning for him because the principal was tired of kids using them as excuses to skip class and fuck around. I still can hear my friend smiling, making his loud cooing noise. Saddest, my junior year of high school, one of the students in my math class got shot and killed in a drive-by. Apparently her ex-boyfriend was aiming at her new boyfriend and shot her instead. We didn't do anything in class for a whole week because everyone, even more so our teacher, which is really, really sad. Scariest, about 10 students from a rival high school close to ours dressed in our school's uniform and trespassed on our campus during lunch and assaulted a group of our students that they had beef with. The administrators couldn't even stop them as this was more than just some spat or fight. Our students were getting beaten to a pulp. Eventually, the cops came and arrested the other students and sent most of ours to the hospital. I remember seeing one of our administrators thrown into the air when he tried to get in between two of the guys. When my 12-year-old fellow classmate passed away, and they couldn't explain why, so they told us it was an accidental suicide. I understood what suicide meant, but the very nature of it meant there was intention behind it. Calling it accidental just confused the grief I was already experiencing. I'd already lost my grandparents within memory. I understood death. But having to go to class every day after for the rest of the year where his desk used to be, where he used to be, leaving class afterwards late because I was a slow mover and him not being there anymore were hard. During roll call in high school, when someone wasn't there and the other kids would snicker and say, oh, they died, was brutal. Because one day in the middle of the week, there was an empty chair and the boy that sat in it never came back. Scariest was my friend getting his head cut quite badly and needing an ambulance. Saddest was a girl died. It didn't particularly sadden me as I was not a fan of hers, but a few of our mutual friends were down for a few months. One thing that did annoy me was everyone hated on the truck driver that hit her. Well, she pulled out without looking onto a highway and got clipped. The guy was like 25 with a daughter and his life was turned upside down, I'm sure. Bad news all around teacher here, both their 7th grade. The scariest wasn't really scary, but was more of a what the hell type of thing. Kid got mad because the teacher wouldn't up his grade from failing to an A or B. Opened up the window, second story, this was one of the few rooms without bars on the window, and while maniacally laughing, threw books out of it, kept laughing, went to walk out of the room and pulled the door shut so hard that the glass in the door shattered. Walked down the hall laughing, the scariest non what the hell thing. Student waited for a teacher and jumped her outside of the building after school one day. She didn't come back. Saddest, one of my brightest and happiest students was dealing with some family issues. Found out in the morning before school that his cousin had stabbed his aunt to death 48 times or something ridiculous like that and still had to come to school because his parents couldn't miss work and his aunt was basically his other mom. I remember him sitting in the cafeteria and absolutely bawling over it. Not the usual. I was at the bottom of two flights of stairs in a large open hallway, so the stairs were an open style. Anyway, this kid from the top did the thing where he slid down the hand railing on his stomach, flipped over the railing on accident, fell two stories, landed feet away from me. Sickening thud. He broke ribs, a leg, many teeth, partially collapsed lung, concussion. He was back in school relatively quickly. I had my back to it, so I didn't see the landing. I think it was straight on his back. Lucky in my opinion. This was like in first grade, but when I went to school in a middle to lower place in Mexico, there was one kid who I forgot his name, but his family was severely broke. 
We were friends, and one day he told me that he had been saving 20 pesos so that he could buy some of the nice school food they sold. First, I have to say that in Mexico, they don't give you free lunch. You have to pay for it or bring your own. He usually brought a cheese quesadilla, and if he was lucky, a piece of avocado. Anyways, he walked up to the stand and he said, one plate of insert Mexican plate here, I forgot which one, large, which was 20 pesos. But then the lady said they had hired the price to 22 pesos. Seeing him walk away and ask for two pesos from the entirety of the recess pains me inside now that I look back. I attend a private school in Scotland's capital, Edinburgh, UK. A couple of years ago, a girl in my modern languages class took her own life. It is believed she overdosed, but no one is 100% sure. Hit the school hard, because I don't think something like that had ever really happened before in the school's history. A lot of people were debated, including teachers. The school offered bereavement sessions during and after school. When it was announced at assembly, one of our deputy heads, who was leading the assembly, started to choke up and couldn't finish what she had to say. She walked off stage sobbing, and the school was dead silent. It is believed that she didn't have a great home life as her dad left her and her mom, I think, and her mom was abusive, again, not 100% certain of that, and was several court cases with and against her mom. At said assembly, a brief video was played, which had been put together by some of her closest friends. Truly tragic and heartbreaking, it hit national headlines for a couple of news outlets and tabloids. In a gloomy, realistic kind of way, the PE teacher being a pedophile, school administration knew and repeatedly backed him up. PE teacher has a habit of barging in unannounced in the girls' locker room. While climbing the rock climbing wall, teacher would grab girls' butts to help them, even when they vocally told him to please stop. He would put his hands all over the girls in gym to help with their form. He never did any of that to the guys. The principal and other admin knew all about it. It was routine to hear about a girl's parents making a stink, threatening to sue, etc., but the school always backed up the teacher. He retired peacefully after a lifetime of perving on girls as young as 12 and is currently receiving a full pension. When I started my seventh year, my science teacher said this would be his last year of teaching, and he asked us to help him make it a good one. He was the kind of fun teacher who would do lots of hands-on experiments, so it would have been easy, right? Cut to the end of the year, and my class had worn him down with complete disrespect and immaturity. We only worked in textbooks because we proved unreliable with anything hands-on. Classmates threw school property at each other in front of him, and he had given up trying to discipline them for it because it was a daily occurrence. Talking back, insults, generally just awfulness. First graders behaved better. My teacher became very despondent, didn't really do anything but sit at his desk while we worked. Before then, he had put me in charge of a long-term experiment he'd always wanted to do, use mirrors to redirect a laser pointer all around the school. He was super excited about the project, and so was I. I didn't often get to work with physical stuff or use my idea to make things happen, so it was a whole new world for me. Until my classmates disassembled all of our progress and he gave up on it. I feel so much guilt for it to this day. Eight years later, I feel like I didn't do enough to make things right. I tried to get in contact with him to finish that experiment years later, but I was unable to find him. Small town. Football is king. One of my friends was sexually assaulted on campus. I was a witness to the exit of her attacker. She waited in a chair while blood pooled beneath her and police questioned her, wearing sweatpants I gave her because her clothes were ruined and evidence. They kept her for over an hour, questioning her before I got a call out to her parents. A hospital trip later, she's had to have serious surgery to stop internal bleeding. She was a minor. He was legal of age quarterback star of the team. Open and shut case, right? Witnesses, evidence, grand jury refused to indict for statutory rape. She ended up leaving town, bullied, and her name dragged through the mud. I tried to be there for her, especially since I was the one who found her. Her face that day has never left my memory, nor the blood puddling beneath her seat. This was before cell phones, or I'd have called her family sooner. I testified for her, and while I know I did everything I could at that age, 13, I still wished I could have done more. In sixth grade, a kid showed me a knife and said he was going to stab someone if they made a move on him. Thing was, the kid he was going to stab was the school's fat nice kid, who was just the chillest dude. I was in shock and never told anyone, so luckily nothing happened. All a few years after that, there was a shooter threat, so the whole district went on lockdown. My classroom was raided by cops with rifles who yelled at us to get our hands up. 
We were escorted and patted down to make sure nobody had a gun. This was two years ago. This girl's brother was driving and their car got hit by a dump truck. She did not make it that same week. Another girl went missing who was less popular and no one seemed to care but her friend group. They found her three days later by a creek. Three days later after they announced the car girl's death. School of 3000. Plus I remember the cafeteria and lunchroom being so quiet for those two weeks. It was cloudy and rainy and gray. It was so different from how school usually was. It just hit like so fast our town was very quiet. Too, you never heard of shit like that. Sun didn't appear till like three weeks later. It was so dark and gloomy those days. They had prayer circles and everything. A guy was struck and killed by a campus bus at Yukon in 2011 when I was a student there. The bus driver was distracted because he was waving at another bus driver coming at him from the opposite direction, which was a custom of theirs whenever they passed each other. The ATM camera caught the whole thing. The bus driver's head was completely turned away from the pedestrian immediately before he was struck. Absolutely preventable. I had never met him, but we had mutual friends, and it was a huge tragedy. He was in a cappella group, one of the better ones, and they had a tribute concert for him that was really moving. The in incident is what led to the campus buses having a voice recording that plays when the bus starts or stops moving and when it turns. They also added extra streetlights and cameras at intersections. In the English equivalent of sophomore year, we were one week away from the summer holidays. This year, one of the guys in our year group had his mom die of cancer. It was tragic. As a 16-year-old boy, he couldn't really express his feelings well on the subject and chose to direct his pain onto others. We shall call him Jay. Anyway, a week before the end of the year, he was picking on B. B was the shortest boy in our year and quite unpopular due to his obvious stalkery obsession with one of the popular girls. Now, I was a bit away from what was happening, eating my lunch, so I didn't hear what Jay said to B for B to finally snap, but I heard B's response clearly. Well, at least my mom isn't dead. Although outside, you could have heard a pin drop. Around 20 kids in our year group heard this remark. Everything went still, and then madness. Jay swung and got B in the face. He went down. Three other boys ran over to them and they, plus Jay, grabbed B and start carrying him away. We all follow. At our school, we had a giant metal cube outside our PE building that was used to store sports equipment. The four boys shove him in there. Unfortunately for B, the door for this cube could be locked from the outside by pulling the door handle up. No idea why. This happened around 11.30 a.m. B wasn't let out until 3.30 p.m when the hockey coach opened the door to get the equipment for after-school hockey. He missed three classes and afternoon recess. What is sad about the story, aside from what was mentioned, was the fact that this event spread like wildfire, and by the time B was let out, everyone in my year group knew he was trapped in there. We're talking about 200 students. When people heard what was going on, most of them responded roughly. Well, he shouldn't have said that about Jay's mom, he deserved it. It was pure mob mentality, and not a single one let him out or told the teacher.